So I discovered Rose through TikTok, which I think is how everyone discovers everything nowadays. I think it's through, through TikTok. It's funny how much the world has changed. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a child, we did not have TikTok. We didn't have social media. We didn't have the internet. Um, and it amazes me that young people today just have the ability to learn so much about the world and everything around them that I was, you know, just a, a clueless child by comparison. You know, when I think about it today, uh, Rose and I struck up a conversation. I saw her video where she had done, you know, Princess Diana's haircut. And when I looked at it, it reminded me of when I was a child and we used to see, you know, images of Princess Diana on in the tabloids and the magazine. She was one of those people that even though she was no longer with us, she was always kind of around. You know, e even as an American, you know, like Princess Diana was around. I remember the Franklin Mint uh, porcelain and posable collectible dolls that they used to sell in the catalogs. And I remember they had done a couple really, you know, beautiful gowns for her. Uh, they were selling the velvet travolta gown around the same time that titanic had come out i remember seeing that vividly you know i think i even had the magazine with me in the supermarket at one time and was just carrying it around with me and then rose had asked me in one of our conversations she said do you remember when princess diana died and i thought about it for a moment because it wasn't something that i had really reflected on before and i thought um i actually yeah, not very well, because I was pretty young. One part of it that I do remember quite well, and that was when the news kept running the story, you know, uh, Diana, Princess of Wales, has, has died in a car accident. You know, Diana, Princess of Wales, the Princess of Wales. And I remember thinking, you know, I didn't know that the Wales had a princess. Do the, do the turtles have a princess? You know, is there a princess of the dolphins? Um, because I didn't really understand. I hadn't thought about that moment until her and I had actually had that conversation and she said that is something that a child would think and I thought, yeah, that's true. It's amazing that today, you know, we see Princess Diana in so many places. We had the film Spencer that came out, a very interesting film uh, movie uh, with an interpretation of Diana by Kristen Stewart and then, you know, we had the new season of The Crown starring Elizabeth Debicki. Even through TikTok, when I was on there, you know, Rose's videos popped up and all of a sudden I was seeing her again, you know, just through, through her haircut and then on, you know, social media she had done one of her looks and I thought, and I said this to Rose, you know, do you think it would be fun if we work together on a project? You know, I, I really only choose to work on projects when I'm excited and inspired and this particular project, you know, really working with Rose, with her, interest in her passion and her enthusiasm, you know, for the, the styles and the makeup um, and the videos, you know, as a content creator that she puts together. It, it really made this project come to life for me. And this particular project went on for, oh man, some months, six months, seven months. Um, it, we probably started the conversation about it about eight months ago. I mean, this is this has been a long time coming. <laughs> and we're both, you know, super excited about sharing it with you now. And I'll take you through the entire dress process. And, you know, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to ask me. <laughs> I'll do my best. Even when I watch the video and playback, there are things that I see now that I would do differently. So a, a lot of times when people ask me for, you know, lessons or critique, I, I kind of feel like I don't know if I'm truly qualified to teach that. I can answer questions specifically about something that I've done and I can advise people who are interested in dressmaking and you know I feel like the the most that I can offer as a creative is just maybe a little guidance in how to follow your own creative direction and your own creative path. I think that's probably the most important thing and also the hardest thing. It's the easiest and the hardest. My words of wisdom to anyone who's um, interested in pursuing anything similar. So here we go. <laughs> I actually feel like this project started uh, truly during the pandemic when I decided to do a drawing of Diana Chiffon Khan gown uh, for a t-shirt design and I went through the whole process and did crystals and all that and never wore it. <laughs> And this project was graciously sponsored by Zalu Fabrics in New York. I had the privilege of going to travel there myself to their uh, showroom in Manhattan where I was working on another project with them with a custom printed velvet gown with one of my own paintings. And they were kind enough to let me go up to the floor and explore the different materials that they had and uh, they're just wonderful time. 
Through their website, you actually have the ability to order swatches of all different colors. They're completely free, and they have sequins and lace, and I ordered every different type of color that I thought might be useful for this project, and I wanted to test all of them. You can see that I laid them out on top of each other so I could actually see all the different variations because every one of these combinations would make the dress look slightly different. And I wound up with two leading contenders for fabric options, and I wound up going with the one on the left, which ultimately ended up becoming a TikTok to tease this entire project. When I was an intern in New York City when I was much younger, I learned that one of the most valuable ways to work on fashion, especially if you're working on dresses, is that you will find yourself working on the floor. <laughs> Truly on the floor. And in this case, I had to lay out a whole bunch of semicircles to do the outer layer of the chiffons of this skirt, as well as the lining, which is the aqua satin. And this was during Hurricane Ian when it was passing through Florida, and it was just a really terrifying night, and I, I couldn't sleep. So I found myself use, using that as the m motivation to focus and distract myself with something else. So I wound up laying out all the pieces on the floor and, and cutting them out. I, th I don't know, it might have been six, eight semicircles. And then I would put them up in the foam, which was adjusted to Rose's height, and trim off the extra pieces as well as the hem of the skirt. I don't trim it all the way up, just long enough that I can go back and do it later. And then for the scarf of this dress, I threw it over the form as well and checked the bottom to cut it so it was just the right length. And then here's the final product from that. So from one evening where I'd cut out all the pieces, we had the basic form of this dress. And I was pretty impressed with that out at this point. The final step was to just do that last trimming on the base of the skirt. Something that I have never tried before was actually to tape down the bodice. I saw this on another person's YouTube video that they had purchased this tape specifically for the purposes of pattern making and I had never heard of it. So I went out and purchased the tape myself and this was my first time using it. The challenge of this bodice is that it was slightly asymmetrical so you had to add all of those pieces separately and it was a little bit challenging at times to, to try and get it into the right place. But that's why you have to start somewhere. There are so many wonderful places that you can go for pre-made patterns. You know, Etsy is a fantastic resource if you're looking for a design that's pretty common and you don't feel like making the entire pattern from scratch because pattern making is extremely time consuming. And in this case, of course, you know, I couldn't just go out and find a pattern for this uh, custom made Diana gown, so I had to drape all of the pieces of the pattern. So you'll see that I've subdivided all the sections of the torso into all the pieces that are going to be in the three layer bodice. And this is what it looks like in real time. It's it's not a very particularly fast process and uh, goes on for a while. So in the end, I wound up with all these different pattern pieces that I had to mark where the subdivisions were so that those would all be separate. And you'll see in a moment just how many pattern pieces I wound up with. So depending on what you're doing, if your draped pieces were done very carefully, you can actually use those directly onto your final fabric. That's a little more of an advanced stage, but in this case, you know, what I'm doing is I retrace all of those pieces over a light table onto paper, and the paper will allow me to cut them multiple times because you'll see there are a few layers that need to be cut, and I will need a clean line for each of them, a clean edge. So these are all of the individual pieces. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. There were so many of them. One of the things that I tell beginners that's really important if you're you're new to sewing that is a little bit of a trickster is that satin is actually one of the most difficult fabrics to work with. It's it slides, it moves, it frays. It's just very very finicky and very fussy, and I do not recommend it. So because I was using satin for the lining, um, you can see that I had to put all of the individual parts of it on top of the fabric, pin them on very carefully, and then trim them, and immediately they started to fray <laughs> because I did not cut them properly. So what I ended up doing was going back over every individual piece with the uh, pinking shears. If you've seen these scissors before with that zigzag edge, and you're like, what are those for? Those are to give you a clean edge on fabric that is more likely to fray. And here are all of the individual patterns with the cut pieces beneath them, and jeez, holy moly, I have a lot to do. Because I was taking no no chances with this satin, I went through and did basting stitches between every single piece. So a basting stitch is a 
wide hand done stitch that you will use to keep the patterns in place and then you will sew through it on the machine and then very carefully you pull the basting stitch out and your fabric doesn't slip when you're putting it together. Satin has a very easy tendency to slip when you're uh, especially when you're rushing or working quickly. So at this point, you're going to press your seams open and you get something that looks a little bit like this. Quite clean, quite nice. And then I put it up in the form to just see that if I was going in the right direction and also it just makes me feel good because there's so many steps to this. No matter how much sewing experience you have, uh, everybody makes mistakes. And in this case, you get to watch me make one right now. Planning your project ahead of time and understanding how all the sections and parts are going to fit together is very important to... Uh, fix any problems that you could have down the line. Here I wasn't sure originally that I thought I was actually going to use interfacing to create structure in the top of the bodice and then what I realized after cutting it and installing it and putting it all in that what happened was the the bodice was a little too tight so the satin was starting to fray and pull itself apart so I actually had to go along and install boning channels, which were not part of the original plan, because otherwise it was just kind of pulling itself apart. So here you can watch me try to <laughs> get boning. That lit the dress on fire on a tiny little part, so be careful when you're lining up your boning. Fudge. Don't do that. I'd also like to point out that almost everything we have done up to this point are not things that are going to be seen on the outside of the final dress. But it is crucial to design a proper understructure for any type of garment, especially something like this where I have multiple layers of polyester material and they're going to be quite heavy. So if you haven't built the inside of it with the right uh, firmness and, and the right strength, uh, it's not going to lay properly on your model. You would see that, you know, that it's a rookie mistake. It's something that comes with practice to make sure that you end up doing the right thing. When I originally chose to do this particular dress, I did not fully realize exactly how much hand sewing was going to be required of me in order to complete, especially uh, the bodice for this dress. Pretty much the entire thing is all sewn by hand. You know, I had to take a very large piece of material and uh, use a technique called shirring where you're going to run two stitches down it so that you can basically bunch it up. And then once I did that, I had to lay that on top of the lining material and then very carefully by hand adjust it into exactly the right place. You can see it looks a little bit like this and you wind up with all this extra material that you're going to have to trim off by hand. So then I cut two fairly large bias strips that were going to be the draped part around the section that twists around the the waist and i actually i had never done this quite quite like this before this was uh more couture than you know what, what i typically do so i didn't really have a plan when i jumped in and just started working on it and i thought okay you know this will be fine and then of course you know once i was done and i went through and you know pinned everything into the right place and then uh, hand sewed it all the way up uh, the inside i realized that i did not like it at all it just was not neat enough for my liking in addition to the fact that i sewed it uh, to my form and i had to cut it through so i actually went through and redid the whole thing again and you can see here it's much cleaner more consistent and that's the amount of effort required to make something that looks uh, this seemingly simple. You know, all of this hand sewing and all of these pieces. So I actually only ended up sewing where those pins are, but I think on the original dress, all of those were sewn all the way across. I believe that truly the best deadline of all deadlines is when you have to make a flight and you need to get yourself to the airport. So at this point, you may notice that the camera angle stopped changing because this was the end of the line. For this project and I had to have everything done before I was going to fly home to visit my family so at this point I am frantically hand sewing all of the pieces of the skirt and adding them to the bodice and adding some bias tape to the edge and it was really challenging because I had to sew from the underside and in order to do that I had to get under the very heavy skirt so you can see in this case that I'm pinning it up to the form so that I can actually get my hands underneath and then I am hand sewing up to the edge of the bodice because remember it has uh, that asymmetrical shape um, 
So unfortunately, it was not something that I could just rush right through the machine, that it all had to be done very carefully, you know, one stitch at a time. If I were to show this in real time, we'd all be falling asleep. And because I didn't finish on the deadline that I had set for myself, that the dress actually traveled with me uh, to Boston to visit my family, where I realized that I had unfortunately left the scarf that I had created back at home in my studio in Florida. So I had to spend uh, approximately three days hand creating another scarf. And luckily for me, I had actually included what I thought was a scrap of fabric, which was actually the second half of the piece that I had cut for the scarf. So I was able to carefully take the time to pin and hand sew the edge of that scarf. It was actually wound up quite beautiful, even though it was extremely time consuming. So Rose actually lucked out and wound up with a much, much nicer scarf due to that mistake. And then I pretended to run it over to the post office just so I could run back and then do it all again. Woo. All right. So you've seen the entire process. <laughs> Hopefully you're all right. <laughs> I'm happy it's over with. So with this said, I sent the dress on its merry little way to Rose in uh, in the Netherlands, <laughs> and she had it for a little while. And Rose actually has created an entire vlog dedicated to talking about everything that she put together. You know, she went to the salon to get her haircut. Uh, she chose the venue where they took these these incredible photos. And uh, the video that I'm about to show you, which was shot by her father um, at this location. And I have to tell you, when I, when I saw it, I was truly blown away by it. Just absolutely astounded. Heart filled just to see, you know, after all this work and everything that we had done, how it came together so beautifully. And I was mm. in awe and impressed with, with what Rose and her family had done. So without further ado, please enjoy. Mm -hmm. 